chapter 45. McGee! McGee! Maniac's first groggle thought was that it was the buffalo calling to him. Then he thought, it's the superintendent. He's discovered me and he's come to kick me out. He propped himself on his elbows, swatted a straw from his ear, and gave a better listen. McGee! McGee! Mars Bar. It was the second night following the morning at the trestle. Maniac had been asleep in the buffalo lean to. He stood. McGee! Where are you? Here, over here. He headed toward the voice over the hoof chopped earth. The moon was full. He could see Mars Bar's dark form against the fence. He could see his eyes. What are you doing here? I've been looking for you. I heard you hung out here. Where'd you hear that? Amanda Beale. You really sleep here, man? What do you want? Where's the buffaloes? I can't see them. They're sleeping like every other person that's got sense. What are you doing out here at this time of night? I snuck out. I'm not there. If I'm not there when they wake up, they'll figure I'm out running like usual. Ain't you afraid in there? No. Both fell silent. Cricket talk and fireflies held the night. McGee? Yeah? Got to ask you something. Go ahead. Why'd you, why didn't you go after the kid? Why'd you go away? Maniac didn't answer. Listen, man, I know you wasn't scared. I know it. So I had to come ask you. Maniac's voice came faintly. Is he okay? I asked you first. Maniac drew a long breath. You want to come in? Mars Bar laughed. You kidding? Ain't no buffalo going to eat this dude. They don't eat people. You come out here, man. Maniac climbed the fence. He started to walk. Mars Bar walked with him. Maniac told him the story of his parents' death. He told him about the problem with the trestle. Now he had learned to avoid it. And then, all of a sudden, there I was, on the platform, looking out at it, closer to it than I ever was before, up on the same level. I always saw it from below before. Now I was up there, too, where they were looking down and it was more real than ever the nightmare was worse than ever i saw the trolley coming i saw it falling them them they walked in silence past the silo shaped cage of the broken winged golden eagle mars bar swallowed hard his voice was hoarse i knew you wasn't scared maniac sniffed i don't remember much Next thing I know, I was somewhere on Sweet Sweet Street. Somebody come down the East End like you did, all by himself, a fish belly, got all in my face. He ripped a stick along the deer pen fence. I knew scared, wasn't it? So, said Maniac, what happened? Mars Bar laughed. Why does that happen? And I still don't believe it. He ripped the fence. That little honky, he looks at me, all his crybaby face. And he says, okay, can I go out and get his brother? I look around like somebody else here. I says to him, who are you talking to? Me? I'm just pulling his chain. Only he don't know it because I'm ticked a little, you know, because there he was hollering for you up the street. And there I am standing right alongside the damn stupid white potato. Understand? Understand what I'm saying? Maniac nodded. And out of the darkness came the strangest sound, a kind of amplified gulp. Mars Bar jumped. What's that? Emu, It's a maniac over there. Behind the nearest fence loomed a tall, thin neck toppled by a small head. E what? Emu, second largest bird in the world after the ostrich. They're from Australia. I don't remember studying about no emu. You buddies with all these dudes? Nah, just the buffalo. So go ahead. What happened? What happened? Mars Bar snorted. What happened was I went out and rescued the dumb fish. Like to get myself killed. Maniac touched Mars Bar's arm. He's, he's okay? Mars Bar snickered. Yeah, he's okay. But that ain't the main part. The main part is how he was all grabbing onto me, coming off them tracks, shaking, shivering, hugging, like he wanted to climb inside me. I was afraid. <laughs> he shook his head, giggled, afraid the fish belly was going to kiss me. They laughed. Maniac tried to picture it. Two of them making their way across the trestle, tie by tie, arms wrapped around each other. And even that ain't the meanest part, meanest part, said Mars Bar, his voice rising in wonder. Even when we got off, the midget wouldn't let me go. We're off it, I says to him. You're rescued. 
but all he does is grab me harder like he's an octopus or something. Off the platform, down the steps, out to the street, he's still doing. I couldn't pry him off no how. So, said Maniac, what did you do? What did I do? I, I took him home. Maniac stopped dead. What? Mars Bar shrugged. I figured, let my mom pry him off me. Of course, the other one had to come too, but I made him leave them muddy sneakers outside. He put his nose to a fence. What's in there? I don't see nothing. Prairie Dog Town. They're underground. So what then? So my mother took over. She pried the one off me, and soon she does, he jumps right onto her like an octopus. I go to pull him off, and she gets all mad at me and says, let him go. Let him go. She gets the wet one dried off, takes his clothes, puts my old stuff on him. Stuff she's been saving because in case I get a little brother someday. But I won't because my mom can't have no babies no more. And I ain't even come to the craziest part yet. What's that? They didn't want to go home. They stayed all day. My mother babying them, feed them. I tell her not to. She swats me away. Sometimes my mom ain't got no sense. She makes me play games with them, Monopoly and stuff. Finally, my father drives them home. It's after dark. They're getting out of the car and know what they say to me. I'm in the car too, he wagged his head. They asked me to come in and play that game of theirs, Rebels. They like beg me. They say, come on, please. If you play with us, we'll let you be white. You believe that? Maniac chuckled. I believe it. They walked on. McGee? Yeah. I had to ask you something. Now I got to tell you something. What's that? You smell like a buffalo. Ears of a hundred different shapes pricked at the long, loud laugh of the boy. McGee, Mars Bar said after a spell. Yeah? My mother wants to ask you something too. Your mother? Yeah, like I told her about you, you know. Actually, she already heard about you. So she wants to know, like, uh, why don't you come to our house? Maniac turned, stared directly at Mars Bar. Mars Bar looked away. He said nothing more. They walked on, silent among the crickets and the fireflies. Having made a full circle of the zoo, they were back at the pen of the American bison. Maniac said, I can't. Why not? Said Mars Bar. My house not good enough. My mother, Mani Maniac struggled for words. I didn't say I didn't want to. It's just, I, I don't know. Things happen. I can't. Look, man, Mars Bar snapped. Ain't nobody saying come live with us. All we're saying, all she's saying is, you know, you, you want to come for a little, you know, visit. You want to? Well, come on. You can't, that's all. Don't go making no big thing, man. It ain't no big thing. Maniac shuddered. He turned his eyes to the sky, beyond the flickering fireflies to the stars. If there were answers, they were far away at the constellations. I gotta go, he said. Before Mars Bar could react, he was over the fence and hurrying for the lean-to.